This is part four of our squat rack series where we are learning how to 3D model a squat rack in Fusion 360. In this video, we're going to learn how to create these top sidebars. The first thing I'm going to do is tell my left base component to be completely invisible. Then I'm going to go to Construct Midplane, and I want to create a midplane from the top and the bottom of my front left height. So there's the top, go down to the bottom, and hit OK. And if we look, we should have a midplane right through the middle. Let's make our left base visible again, but tell our front height on the left side and our back base on the left side to be invisible. Then let's go to Create, Mirror, and let's make sure we have Body selected. And let's select these two top bodies and go across this plane and hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this construction plane. And let's take a look at these. You'll notice that these two pegs are actually inside of our left base bodies. And that's what you can expect when you mirror bodies. It creates those bodies inside of the component you were mirroring from. That's no big deal. Just right click on either one of these new pegs and go to create components from bodies. And you'll notice that that actually doesn't put it inside our file, but rather it turns left base into an assembly with two components inside. That's an easy fix as well. Let's drag this component six up to squat rack. And now it's down here. And let's change the name of this component to top left bar. And hit enter. And then let's go ahead and grab that last body and drag it into our new top left bar component. And so if I open this up, you can see that we have two bodies. Now, if we take a look at our image, we'll notice that those holes are actually facing front to back not side to side. And we actually looked at that in our last video when we made our front height. We made sure that the hole was facing forward and not sideways. And so that's actually an easy fix. Let's go ahead and go to move copy. And let's make sure bodies is selected. And I want to select the center of one of these bodies. And it is important that you select the center. If you don't select the center, it'll actually start to rotate around wherever you select. So you can see it's not rotating in place. So if I turn it, you'll notice these don't actually line up, nor does the front height. And that's just because I selected the wrong spot. So let's go ahead and hit cancel. And let's try it again, move copy. And I'm going to make sure I select the center and I want to rotate it 90 degrees. And hit OK. And then we'll do it again over here. We're going to move copy, select the center, very important, and rotate it 90 degrees. And hit OK. And so now, when we turn on our front height and our back height, you will see that those holes perfectly align and go straight through. But let's turn off our front height and our back height on the left again, because we don't want them getting in the way of our next extrusions. And let's start a sketch on the top of one of our two bodies. And then I also want to go ahead and turn off my left base component because I don't want that in my picture at all. I just want to be looking at what I'm looking at. And if you look, it looks like it does extrude just a little bit past this bar here. So let's grab a rectangle tool. And let's draw just a rectangle that's too big. And let's find our collinear constraint. And I want to tell the left side of my rectangle to be collinear to the left side of this peg and the right side to be collinear with the right side of this peg. Then I want to grab my dimension tool and I want it to go out just a little bit further than that edge like we saw in the picture. So let's just go a quarter of an inch. That's probably a safe bet. 0.25 and then up here the same thing from this edge to this edge 0.25 and hit OK and hit enter and let's finish our sketch let's hit extrude and make sure we select all parts to the sketch and how far do we want to extrude well we're just making the frame again so it should just be two and a half inches 
2.5 and make sure you have new body selected and hit OK. And it looks like it accidentally put that body up here in my squat rack assembly as opposed to in my top left bar component. That's an easy fix. Let's just click on this body nine and drag it down to top left bar. And now we have three bodies inside this component. Next, as usual, we need to add our fillets to our four edges. Let's go down to the bottom view and select this edge as well and type in seven over 64. And of course, we need to select our shell tool and let's make sure we only select the faces on the front and the back. And let's tell this to also be seven over 64. And let's take a look at what we got. If I hit my home view, if we look here, it's looking pretty good, but there are these holes on the back that kind of mirror what happened on the bottom. Although it doesn't look like there's quite as many holes. How many holes are up here on the top? Two, four, six, eight. And they're only on the back edge to make room for this pull-up bar here. Okay, so we can do that. Let's start a sketch on this side face here. Go up to the top. And let's grab our circle tool. And let's just draw a circle for ourselves and tell it to be one inch in diameter to match our J hole circles that we built earlier. And let's see here, I'm gonna create a point and use the center of this edge to tell these two to be horizontal. But then the question is, is how far to the left and right do we go? Well, I'm actually gonna make the hole on the bottom line up with the hole on the top. And since we're on the far right, I could actually use this hole down here at the very bottom to line this one up. And so I'm gonna open up my project tool. So go to create, project, and I'm gonna select this circle. Hit okay, and what that does is it projects that circle onto the sketch that we're drawing on right now. So then I'm gonna grab my horizontal vertical constraint and I'm gonna select the center of this circle and the center of my new circle. And so that should fully constrain this sketch. Let's go to finish sketch and extrude. And let's go ahead and cut it all the way through. Select our rectangular pattern. Make sure features is selected. And let's select this feature down this axis. And so how many do we want? Well, we said earlier that there were eight. Make sure you have spacing selected. And I believe we said the distance between these holes is two inches in our previous videos and hit enter and let's take a look at how it looks let's compare it to our image and it's looking pretty good then we got our pull-up bar up here and it looks like it's got two bolts sticking out of it and so that's easy enough let's start another sketch and those bolts we've been making 10 millimeters so let's just repeat that so we'll draw two quick circles that have a diameter of 10 millimeters hit enter and just do another one and I could write 10 millimeters or I could find my equal constraint and just tell these two circles to be equal in size. Right click OK. I'll use my horizontal constraint to tell this circle to be centered with this circle and tell this circle to also be horizontal with this circle. And so the only thing we have left is the left and right dimensions for both of these. And so let's take a look. It looks like there's a little bit of a gap between this hole and this bolt. I believe we've been doing a standard five inches in between holes and bolts. So let's just keep that going. Let's go to dimension between this hole and this hole. Let's just tell it to be five inches. Right click cancel. And the question is, is where do I want this? Well, if I look, it looks like it's pretty close to this edge, but not quite there. So maybe around here and let's see what that looks like. If we go to dimension, and dimension these two, it looks like it's about nine inches. And so let's just go with an even nine. Right click cancel, hit finish sketch, and let's extrude those two holes for our bolts. Cut it through and hit okay. And I think we've got all of the details on this top component up here. 
And so all that's left to do is just mirror it, right? So we go to create, mirror, make sure you have components selected. And let's select this entire top left bar component. And the, for the plane, let's select the origin and hit OK. And let's change the name of this to top right bar. And let's take a look at what all we got done so far. So I'll turn on my front height and my back height and my left base and we can see how well we're doing. Make sure you save your progress. Hit OK. And we are done with this video.